Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of Easy Busy Podcast. Today's guest is uh, someone special, um, my dad. Um, I decided to bring him on because there's many interesting topics that we can cover. But for today, I decided to leave it at rowing because for, for him and I, rowing is very important. Um, it's my sport that I've been doing for five years and, um, Dennis, uh, has done it for like all through, all through his childhood. So, um, I think we're going to begin off, um, with, um, um, Dennis, I'll call you this way. Um, I know I usually call you, uh, dad, but for this podcast, I'll call you Dennis. So. Can you give us a little bit of introduction, tell our viewers a little bit about you, um, and we'll start like, like this. Hello, everybody. I'm glad to join you on your initial podcast, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, rowing was a really a big part of my life. Uh, it was like a first real sport, although I did, used to do, it, do um, ice hockey, better sports also, but then the only sport that really dragged me in was rowing. And then uh, through rowing, I quite quickly succeed and, and become uh, quite good in a, I would say, relatively short period of time. So the first time I went to Junior World Championships, we already won in a pair. So we were world champions in the first, first ever uh, big competition. And then we continue on. Uh, eventually got the bronze medal, the first Olympic medal in for Slovenia in Barcelona 92. And... Uh, then I continue for one more Olympic cycle from where I moved from pair to the, to the four. In between, I was also um, studying in the United States in the Brown University, Providence, Rhode Island. And uh, it was uh, actually a wonderful experience because I was able to, to study, do rowing. But uh, the main thing is that rowing has given me is uh, a real school for life. It teaches you mm -hmm. that nearly nothing in life comes easy. In the cases where the things come easy in your life, you usually figure out later on that uh, there was a trick in this <laughs> yeah. easy benefit. It's always, you always have to pay for what you use in life. Yeah? And later mm -hmm. on, I also joined back to give back a little bit to the rowing community. I was a president of the rowing federation from uh, 2009 to 2013, which mm -hmm. is also a good experience, but not as I wanted because I'm more kind of an action-oriented action guy, not so much uh, bureaucracy man. Uh huh. Okay. So yeah, that's that's a lot. Um, but I'll I'll, I'll begin with with the uh, the beginning. So, um, for how you started. So I know my grandma or your father. He's also he was also a rower. So that might have been one of the reasons why you got into the sport. Um, but you said that the sport really attracted you. So for here for for first question, I'm curious. What about the sport really? like um, dragged you in and what was it that kept you coming back to, to the boathouse and coming back to practices and, and then at the end of the day to actually become so, so fast in so short period of time? Well, to be honest, it was kind of a very basic thing because when I was playing hockey, they would uh, keep promising us, we'll go to Czech Republic to play this game. We'll get the new equipment, you get the new sticks, you get the new, you know, the the old times in the 80s, the, mm -hmm. the ice skates were not plastic and, and molded like they are now. They were like the old crappy ones where you could hardly hardly um, skate um, vertically. Yeah. But then when it come to the boathouse, it was pretty much very small community, but a very serious, very serious approach to the, to the sport. And uh, I would say no BS approach because it was everything was everything was done it was like was no 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 need to do to tell you twice anything mm -hmm, Just, mm -hmm. you, you come to practice and say do this everybody that did it yes and while doing it we we're also very competitive because uh, out of my generation was maybe four or five guys all the same age and similar body construction so we we're kind of a competitive and that was very good and we also have the older generation rowers 
mm -hmm. that we look up to and he wanted to catch them. And then they were, I mean, at that time, they were very rough. Huh? You, you do, do something right, you got <laughs> so, punched so, in the face, yes, or so thrown in water or something. Yeah. So it was, it was no mercy. But it was but, actually good from my, from my perspective because there was no, no, no freeway in your mind to, to go outside of the, of the path, yes, of being a professional in a way, even though we're not professional, we're just amateurs there. Then. So it was very serious. And just for context, those were, what year was that in? Um, how old were you? And so, so I started when I was 12 years old, it was around uh, 1984. Okay. And uh, so it was, yeah, it was right before, change. it was right before the big, um, I mean, the beginning of those, uh, the period of a lot of um, achievements from our, yes, from yes, the club. yes. The first mm -hmm. uh, big achievement in, in Slo for Slovenia, for Yugoslavian rowing, actually for Slovenian rowing, was in 1988 in yeah. the Seoul Olympics when they got the bronze. Yeah? So at that time, we were still we were uh, not even juniors yet. We were 17 years old, mm -hmm. young juniors, so-called, yes. So a big part of um, your rowing career was uh, rowing with Istok Chop. Um, so you're you were re you're really good in the pair. You said that you won like won your first junior world championships, as well as then later on. And then I guess the peak of your career was also with Istok in the pair. Um, and mm -hmm. I'm I'm just curious, how did you guys actually come together in a boat? Um, were you were you together in a boat because you were both like the fastest or because you were somehow compatible and and you were able to row sort of synchronously nicely well to to, to start with we was kind of i know we were trying different combinations not we coach was trying different combinations mm -hmm. and then we we're the same age then we're, we're both in, in a way individuals so we uh, whoever we rode with we rode you know we fight yeah but yeah. when we sit together, I think both of our comp individualism and the competitiveness really excelled because we're both very competitive. And then we got to d get this competitiveness kind of a sync. So we, we did it together and then we, we practiced more than was needed. Uh, we fight every single practice. I remember since we, we, the first time we, we sat together in the boat was in a, in a double skull. And our first challenge was to, to be faster than a single, yeah? Which was one mm -hmm. of my friends, uh, mm -hmm. one of the crew cool friends of ours. But he was so, so strong and so fast that for us it was inconceivable to beat him, yes? So, so for us it was two months only goal to beat him in a double, yes? Whereas he was a single. And not mm -hmm. only, there, there was not only the, the, the competition-wise competition or, or, or the practice when we had the, the, the strong pieces which we were pulling hard. We tried to beat him every, even in a steady state, yes? And we couldn't. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember it was, we, was, we were young and tiny, and then we were pulling our oars like, like spaghetti, yes? And, yeah. uh, and just uh, really working ourselves to try to beat him. And then he was just all, I still see his face today. He was with all his pleasure, doing he was strong, yes? And then mm -hmm. growing strong. But it was very, very big motivation for us, yes, to get stronger. So yeah, but once we did it, yes, then yeah, a lot, a lot of competition sounds like, and um, yes, I, I, yes. For me personally, I think it's a big part of rowing is that on each practice you try to find something or someone to compete with, and it's it's really the thing that gets you faster, that pushes you. Um, but um, to transition a little bit, so. So when in, um, in your career did you realize that, um, that, you know, that sport, that you are really going to go seriously into rowing and that this is something for you and that you have big ambitions? Well, for me, I mean, I had big ambitions since the beginning, but for me, the beginning was big ambition to be a national champion, yes? That okay. used to be Yugoslavia. So for me, it was like I was dreaming, you know, if I could only be the champion of Yugoslavia. And then, you know, the, pretty much the first year, you sit in a double. We achieve, actually, we were second in, a, in, a, in, a, in a national championships. Mm -hmm. So it was How old were you? achieved, it was 17, uh, sorry, 16. 16 so years old. Like a, so still not a junior, years. right? Young juniors, yeah. okay. Young juniors, yes. 
they actually the first season we set together was a double skull and then uh, we went on we, we become fast um, mm. so we, i think we're the best in yugoslavia anyways but then it was a summer break and uh, nobody told us we're not supposed to just go out on a beach i guess we're in a lake and we're sunbathing yeah. and swimming <laughs> five days for swimming and then our 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 shape was gone yeah? yeah i couldn't believe it when i sat back in a boat in six days but nobody mm -hmm. told us that you're not supposed to be in the sun because your muscles get uh, all you know um, soft especially if you if you go if you're in a water if, i mean if you go for a short swim is okay but if you just stay in the water while you're in a, in a peak uh, shape you're going to lose the shape because uh, the the muscle structure changes and the muscle muscle tone changes and then you lose you lose this uh fitness yes that's it's crazy amazing. yeah that's crazy you know, I, I have to build up again to, to the championships but it wasn't it wasn't enough time to to reach the, the the first place again okay so yeah so you reached the second place and then after that you you had this experience with sunbathing and kind of getting this reset to having to start from the beginning so then the second competition you you kind of were not as as, as um sort of not in as good shape as you were for the first one, right? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but we still we still fought. We still fought hard, and then uh, we end up second. But we were happy, because for us it was still, you know, first, second, uh, first national championship. And yeah, because it was Yugoslavia, and it was mm -hmm. you know the whole. We were much more competitive now than Slovenia because we have mm -hmm. were strong. Uh, strong clubs in Croatia and Serbia and Slovenia also. So. Okay, so then, so then you end up transitioning from double to pair, and so sounds like that you were. So yeah, you began in the double, but then how long were you in a pair before you were actually on the level to actually medal in those world championships and so on? So. So uh, we, when we finish the season as a young juniors, we become juniors. They, uh, the coach put us in a pair, huh? and this pair really felt good. Yes, I mean for me it was rowing. Because mm -hmm. also when we started, all all our, our, our um, older guys were always making fun because if you row, if you do sculling, this is like tooth picking. They're not even oars. Yes. So in our mindset it was like this is the real rowing comes when you start to do sweep rowing, <laughs> and. Uh, and then uh, this was also our dream to be finally able to, to row, like a real rower, yes, to do sweep rowing. So mm -hmm. the pair felt good. Maybe it was psychological, but uh, just it felt good, yes. But, so there was a season when we become a junior for the first time. And, uh, and then uh, our, sp our speed progressed very nicely because we were practicing hard and, mm -hmm. and competing. And then, then because we, we rowed in a, in, a, um, in a sweep row, in a, in a, in a straight pair. Then you also, our next goal was the competition within the club, yes? The, pretty much the, the, the guys who were older than us. The, yeah, because yeah. at that time, juniors. Mm -hmm. it was yeah. Sadik and, 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 yeah. and someone else, they were, preparing, yeah. they were preparing for Seoul and they were very good in Seoul. Yeah, so this was our next target to, to chase after them, yes? Because we're young boys mm -hmm. and then we just try to... So you kind so of had a, a good uh, frame to look at how fast you are. You saw those, how fast they are. Yes, yes, you yes. You could compare yes. yourself. And the same as you mentioned before, competition was really for you. And mm. that's how you yeah. managed to... Um, when I mentioned before the, you know, the, the mindset of... Com uh, and then when we come to a club, I was all serious and professional. It was professional in a way that we did everything that has to be done. It was very professionally done. Mm -hmm. But yet, and we had fun, yeah. There's not, there was not like a strict regime that everybody would like, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, very serious faces and so on. We had fun all the time. It just uh, was very, very clear hierarchy, you know, because the coach and then the, the older rowers and the younger rowers. So you could not over jump the steps, yes. Yeah. And you cannot was... speak when the older rowers speak, yes. You know, you cannot speak, you know, the older rowers don't speak much when the coach would stay telling something. So it was, um, this system was very nicely done, yeah. So, well, like, but but was was inf was no enforcement pretty much. It was just uh, you know the coach was, was never screaming. We never do anything. It was just very calm and and uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, peaceful. And also the the way he he was communicating to us was was in a, in a respectful manner. Yeah, it wasn't 
it wasn't like uh, something you know sometimes you have teams or clubs when coaches would uh, yell and then would um, in a way misbehave mm -hmm. and then in many cases the, the sportsmen will, will lose interest in sport yes especially young age so right, this so, was not the so. case but we were always always afraid of the older rowers yes they, yeah they so i, the, I the, thought that uh, this this might have been a motivation for you because you saw okay so here's a here's the system or hierarchy, and then if we get faster, that's how we tell them that you know we're also important, and that even though if we yes, are younger, yes, yes, yes. even though we're younger, you have to consider us as well, you know. So yeah. I think that could have been one motivation factor. You show your worth through the result. Yeah, exactly. Which, which is also a very good analogy for nowadays life. Yes, people that are strong in words and have no actions. You know, mm -hmm. nowadays they come through through the you know media and so on. But uh, in in real life, you want to succeed, you have to succeed in, in with results, not with with the fancy words. Right. Yeah. You got to show action. Okay. So, so then I think we're in year eighty eight, right? So when you when you when you are in the first big competition, this is in Czech Republic. There was eighty nine, pretty much. 89. Yes, eighty nine. We were okay. juniors. Yes. So yeah, this is your first big uh, achievement, I would say. Um, I mean, at least yeah. from my view. So and one so... thing that I was surprised in a way this year because we had, when we sit in a pair, and then we rode in bled, yes, just surrounded yeah. by our, our club teammates. And then the first uh, connection to the outside world was when every go every year when you go to this uh, national uh, training camp. To Croatia, and then we also s saw boats from the other clubs, yes. Mm -hmm. And suddenly we saw we are f faster than most of them, yes. <laughs> the juniors, the people, because we were first year junior, I was surprised because in the at this time it was a respected pair. I, I remember from Copper, I think from Ljubljana also. But uh, we came in there and then f we swept them off the water in a way, yes. Wow, so we're just better got, than that, yeah. That's how I got selected so, then, or. Yeah, there was no. That was pretty much the first information for us that uh, mm -hmm. we're in the right path. Yeah? But then the first competition, like we used to have this uh, on uh, May first, was like um, in Blade National yeah. Yeah, Regatta, Romanska mm -hmm. Regatta, National. which all the boat all the boats come. Uh, all, we all rode the small boats, which is actually very good. All Yugoslavia, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have if, for scholars, everybody goes to single, and for a uh, sweep rowing, they are all have to compete in the pairs so then you see who who has what yeah and then based yeah. on, on this regatta then it's was formed the national team and they were okay. trying to do the you know, the, the boats at yeah, the bigger boats the fours and pairs and doubles and so on okay so what, what was it like um in in your on your first world championships what was it like to to actually race against the world's best and to qualify for the final and then also to actually you know to actually win that yeah i mean then the first international race i think it was in, in czech in Brno, which we first time met you know the east germans the mm -hmm. uh, i think the czech also the russians and then we just won yeah i was <laughs> surprised <laughs> how amazing it was but it was it was close close race and then they're not we're not sure if this is actually their national team you know as we are not we are presumed national teams yes but then the, the championship in hungary they went it was actually first time for the first time in 2000 meters so we we didn't also it used to be 1500 meters for the juniors oh yeah so that's we didn't right. practice much uh, we didn't practice much in this uh, this distance um and i remember also was a side wind which is always a problem for the rowing course especially for man-made courses uh, so we had a pretty much outside lane so everybody after the the, the semi-finals will say no you have a bad bad uh, lane number it's very hard to, to even medal and so on but we didn't uh, i mean we were a bit nervous we uh, we prepared strong but didn't think too much yeah? we just our mind was set for the victory. Mm -hmm. So what I remember from that race is we start off, we go on, was maybe 700 or even 1,000 meters, 1,000 meters passed by. 
I was so much into into the into the race, and then I look around. There was nobody there. I was like, where are they? <laughs> are we the last? Then we see we are so far behind, and I feel yeah. nothing. I felt I felt so wonderful, so not not rested. Yes, wow, not tired. I was like, holy moly, what's going on? <laughs> where did they all go? <laughs> what, what what happened with the you know the bad position of the of the lane? And then, yeah, of course, the last uh, maybe 400 meters, the fatigue kicked in, yes. Uh, but we, we managed to, to win quite decisively. Yeah, so I guess the first, the first thousand was the adrenaline rush that every yes, rower yes. knows, I guess, for at least to some extent. Um, mm -hmm. So you also mentioned, was that in Hungary? Am I right? Or? Yes, uh, Sigurd, yeah, Hungary. So that was the first uh, world? The, our first world championships, yes. Oh, so then, okay. Then Czech was the second one, okay. That was the first. Uh, no, no, no. The, the first one was, was Hungary, and then the second one was uh, Iggy Billet, was in France, 1990. That was the, that was the, we were still okay. yes. All right, yeah. So, I actually, actually, I then, I was thinking of the, the, the Ratchitsi or Czech Republic when you were already older and when you're racing red green. Yes, uh, yes, but, but, yes, yes, yes. We'll yes. go into that later. Um, but so yeah, then how do you, how does your sort of, as you transition from junior to your to under 23s, I know, I mean, under 23s wasn't the category at your time yet, but how does the, the actual regime of training change, change because uh like for me when i transitioned from juniors to the under 23s you know it became more serious i changed the coach and we started to actually be more systematic about the trainings and also um started to compete in some bigger events so i'm, I'm curious how how your approach changed after you were uh, out of juniors if it did well for us it was you know, juniors were just, I mean, once we won there, for us was juniors were not <laughs> just anymore. We're just looking for, to go and in straight into the game of, of the uh -huh. senior, senior rowing. I mean, senior rowing, we call it, but otherwise it's op open, open competition. So yes, even the, the second year as a juniors, uh, because, you know, we won already last year. So we said, what is our goal? And our goal was to qualify for the senior championships, yes? Because at that time, the, the oh, pair who won right. the medal in 1988 uh, in Seoul, they weren't doing the best job, so they, they didn't qualify to row in a pair. And uh, so we went, because the juniors championships is the mid-season, it was in July, or even early July. Yes. So when we, when we come to, uh, we, we come to junior championships, the second one, we won. Uh, quite easily in a way. And then was our ticket, because at that time, the, this year was the World Championships was in, uh, in Tasmania, in Australia. So for us, it was also a big dream to come to the, to qualify for these championships because it's, uh, you know, the, the first big trip to, to the other side of the world, yes. So yes, we were motivated and then we won the, the championship and then uh, they, they put us in a four with, the, with this pair who previously won the, the Olympic medal. So we're in a straight four. And for us, it was also a very good experience because they were older guys, they're stronger. We are still, you know, maybe 70 kilos or 72 kilos. Uh, but uh, what we saw is we were very much motivated, yes. They didn't have a best relationship in bet between them. This is the first time I realized how important it is when you, when you row in a team, mm -hmm. that this um, similar mindset and then a good uh, team play and then and, uh, and, uh, good team spirit is, is very important. Uh, even in, in a pair, huh? let alone if being in the eight or in the four. This is a, this is a time I realized, uh, because we are fast, yeah, but then they, were, they, kept fight, they kept fighting on and on. And, and then we didn't, I mean, we, 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 I thought we could be even faster, yes. So, so, so you were really young, you were a junior when you actually got into contact with the, mm -hmm. like the best in the world, the seniors. Mm -hmm. Tasmania and then so that must have been a very valuable experience and also probably was something along the path to get you to your first Olympics in at your age you know you were also very young mm -hmm. to qualify mm -hmm. to Barcelona in 92 mm -hmm. so I think 
that that that's something interesting to consider um that you know i don't know if it's if it's just um that there was like this in the past that um athletes said, said like 20 year old athletes could go to the olympics um because today it seems like that is not the case so much anymore but i guess if you were really how do you look at that where you was how was the competition at the olympics was it was was the was were the ages like mostly your ages or were you actually very young on on the games they were very young we were very young yes and then it was only a few rowers that were at, at similar age to come to olympics yes uh, so yeah i, I remember so i think one italian pair that was competing with us was also qualified in, in olympics but but not in a pair it was he, they were in a, i think eight or something and then, for example, uh, talking about Steve Redgrave, he had this Matthew Pinson, which was, I believe, only one or two years older than we are. Huh? He was okay. quite young, but he was a massive guy, and then he was picked up by Redgrave, who was very old and experienced, not very old, but he was older and experienced rower. So he pulled him in, yes, and got him to work. <laughs> Put the whip in and <laughs> make him work hard. <laughs> but otherwise, yes, it was also a phenomenon then, in a way, yes, to be, especially be as a junior in a, in a, in a, in a senior championships, it, it was a phenomenon, and then even the year after, okay, one one thing is to qualify for the the, the senior championships, but the other way is to to perform them and, and, and succeed. Yes, even when we, I told you when we, when we were as a juniors in, in a four, we still came in seventh. Yes, we won the uh, or eighth, yeah, seventh, I believe. Yes, we won the the the, sem, the, the petite final, and we could have qualified for the final, but we we had. <laughs> The older guys had some fight, and then, uh, but anyways, it was a very good experience. Still, for us, it was you know amazing that we uh, even managed and we had a good competition. Lots of boats, uh, all the all the big guys, all the you know the the, the famous rowers we could, we could meet, and then actually you could race against. Yeah, so it was a very good, very good um, stimulation mm -hmm. for us. So, yeah, maybe want to touch on quickly on. Matthew Pinsent and Redgrave. So you you told you told me about them uh, a lot, and they're also they're, they're known to every rower, I believe today. Like they're very mm -hmm. renowned. And um, you've had you were, if I can say, you were rivals. You were always kind of you know, I mean, you were trying to beat them all the time, but then they were trying mm -hmm. to be the unbeaten. But mm -hmm. eventually you succeeded with that eventually you were able to 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 do the impossible to actually to actually frighten them and and beat them right yes yes actually we did there was a the season of olympic games uh, so it was uh, 1992 there was a it's always a, every year a big international regatta either duisburg um or another town Anyways, we are this, this year in Duisburg, and there was always like 40, 50 pairs. Yeah? So pretty much in the morning, you have morning you have heats. Normally, only only the first one to qualify for the finals, the rest <laughs> can rest, yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think there was uh, six, yeah, it was six heats. So what they, what happens is they come, you, you come to study line, and then they pick up, they pick up the heats as, as they go, yes. So you, you actually never know what, what heat you're going to be in. So on a day one, we come there and then uh, they pick up the heat and we, they put us in, in the same heat as, as Redgrave and, and, and Pinson. Okay. So in the morning, uh, first day, first race, Saturday morning, you know, I remember it was a choppy water, but they didn't scare us. We just uh, went out hard and we beat them. Yes, yeah? so we didn't even qualify for the finals. They were, they were so, I, I was watching them, they were so, so, not happy, <laughs> say mildly. Uh, but we, we just felt, felt this is it, yes. I mean, there's nothing that will stop us, yeah. <laughs> you know, because when you're young and you, you have a high ambitions and high goals, then you become, in a way, also a little bit cocky, yes. And then I believe in, in, in the final, we also won. But then the next day, Sunday comes, the heat, and then again, they pick up the, the groups and they put us together again. <laughs> <laughs> I was look. I look. I was. I actually was watching the the Red Graves expression. He was like, "Oh no!" And then they they thought they thought they have us. Uh, they had us, you know, at the time. But then we we beat them again. Yes, 
<laughs> so they come to this international regatta, they didn't make the finals, the, the, you know, the big legends, yes. Of the, they weren't, um, Pinsent wasn't so legendary at that time, but uh, Red Wave was already, yes. So they lost two times. Um, and then they went home and didn't show up for the entire season until the Olympic Games, yes. Whereas we went to practice, we are the races, we were also in, uh, in the Lucerne, which is all, always uh, kind of a, um, the last big race before the either Olympic Games or World Championships. Uh, there, I believe, we also go to second, I believe, or, or yeah, maybe second or third. But they're, they're ready to, to, to aim for the gold, yes, the Olympics. So that might have... That I imagine that gave you a lot of confidence that you were able to beat one yes. of the fastest boats in the world at that time. Um, seeing that Red Wave, I think, I believe, already had two Olympic medals at that time. I might be wrong, but... And so then coming into Olympics, what were your expectations? Um, so you were, I guess, the Olympic season, you, you were doing really well. Uh, as you just said, you beat like the the Red Grave and Vincent, and so coming to Barcelona or you know weeks before that, what were you expecting? I mean, we we came to win there. Yes, <laughs> our mindset <laughs> was always about winning, and no, no, not about being second, or third. It was about winning. Yes, and then also moving the goalposts. Yeah, move, move moving the you know going to the next level every time you beat. Because in our mind was once you beat somebody, that's it. Yes, you don't look back. <laughs> you go for next better one. Yes. So uh, so we came to take the scalp, yeah, of Red Wave in in, uh, in Olympic Games. And, you, and then you finished third. Yes. What happened there? Well, I mean, you know, Olympic Games in regattas, it's. Um, I mean, we are in good shape. I cannot say they did row poorly. I remember that year, it was the, the German pair that we fought all season, but we could never beat them, yes? We tried to beat them in, you know, in the first half of the, uh, the race. We tried to beat them, you know, in the third 500. We tried to beat them in the finish, but always they were short. I remember there was, yes, in, in uh, Lucerne, they, they won. We were, I believe, second. Uh, either, I think Germany also could have been that. I mean, if you are together, they would beat us, yes. And also it happened the same in, in, uh, in Olympic Games. We were there, but then they were faster. But uh, the Red Green Peace, and they came in, they probably worked much harder than they did. Uh, and then they were just uh, on, on the class of, it, of their own, yes. But it was also, you know, we're 20 years old and uh, in, in such a young age, your body's not yet, uh, does not have this capacity of being, you know, such a strong endurance in, in uh, physical performance because you just need years to 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 get this uh, performance. You cannot get it. I mean, you improve, 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 but you cannot go. Uh, you still need some years. Yeah, that's why you see the new new the, the, the rowers now in new age. They they start to get good results when they're after 25, 26, 27 years. And they, they put lots and lots of uh, cardio exercising, meaning cycling, cross country skiing, skiing, I mean, running uh, long hours. Yeah, we used to didn't row as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had workouts which were 20 kilometers. Uh, so that's under two hours, yes. Man, every, right, but never the, nevertheless, this was, this was, sorry to interrupt. Nevertheless, this was still like a big milestone for not only for your career, but also for the Slovenia. You know Slovenia in the sort of yeah in the image of the world because at that time yeah there was actually mm. at that time they were like Slovenia was just becoming an independent country and then mm. and then you were you 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 achieved the first medal for for that for for Slovenia because you know before that it was just Yugoslavia yeah it was a massive you know a massive uh, success we didn't even realize for us on Olympic Games it was just like a championship yes. And a year before in Vienna, we were already second yeah, in the World Championships. And for us, it was nothing to change. So as a result, we weren't too happy about it, yes. But I saw this, the impact that it had in our country, because also the time after the, the war and Slovenian independence. So we, we became very, um, uh, in a way, famous, yes, <laughs> in Slovenia, yeah. within Slovenia. 
And then, but the, the another thing was the whole country was expecting for the Slovenian shooter, yes, Raimond de Beos, to become the first medal. So they were already prepared to to give the, the car, they bought the car for the first Olympic medal. And then he didn't get the medal. Uh, and we did. <laughs> so they were like, they were surprised. Oh my God. How, uh, I guess row, rowing was never such a popular sport. Yeah, it's not, it's not really supported by media and so on. Uh, so it's, um, not the sport that all the all the people in a high position and sponsors were happy about <laughs> because it's like a, what we do with rowing is we cannot make it profitable yes mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. nevertheless it had a big impact and also Slovenia at the time was very united yes because of the independence and we, we finally get out of Yugoslavia which most people were were frustrated with life in, in Yugoslavia and communism anyways and so it was a it was, a, it was a very historic moment yes very historical indeed and as well as also a marker for you know the start of this golden age for rowing in in um in our club and in for slovenia because mm -hmm. you know after your medal in barcelona there were many more to come you know all the way until london olympics in 2012 mm -hmm. um so but then how did so the ambitions you had a big ambitions obviously coming to Barcelona and but then you know completing that cycle the Olympic cycle and going into the new one and I guess also you know you went through some transitions um also with with university so you you at that time you you also went to to the US to study but how did your view on the sport change and also as a result your approach to rowing well, as when I went um, after Olympics, I went to study in the United States. So it was also a very good experience for me. Then uh, we achieved to be two times the national champions, the national collegiate champions of the uh, United States with Brown University, which is an amazing experience. And I was able to, to do college properly because in Ljubljana it was not easy to study and then drive back and do the workouts in, in Bled. But the, the side, the unwanted effect was that uh, Easter then separate to when to start to row in a single, especially when a year after I came back, I was in a good shape, but then uh, I had an accident, a car accident. And later on, this same year, this one of the guys from the four, who, who also, by the way, got the Olympic medal, got a uh, fatal car accident. So there was only three left. So and then since Slovenia, and it's, it's hard to imagine for the big rowing nations, but uh, at that time we had four, I mean, six of us was was uh, op open competition, good rowers. They're able to do Olympic mm -hmm. Games, yes. So then one of them died, Sasha, unfortunately, uh, tragically. And then uh, there was the next logical thing was to have a four in, in, a, in a single. <laughs> That's why I, yes, I end up in a, in, a, in a four. And then was a four year of building for the next Olympic Games. But uh, for me, it was a bit different because uh, these guys were not the same age as I am. I mean, two of them were older, and uh, Yanni, okay, was just a year a year older. But we're not so so um, so in the same vibe as we were with Eastop, yes. Maybe not so motivated uh, for the for for the practicing. But what I realized then is uh, when I looked back, we actually we end up in Atlanta being fourth. Yeah, <laughs> we missed the medal for. Actually, when I, when we went to the, to the finish line, I thought we were second. Yes, <laughs> and the result says uh, it's yeah. not second, not third, or fourth. <laughs> Unfortunate place. It was a very but, close uh, race. Yes, yes, a very close race. I mean, I mean, 500 meters to go, all six boats in a four were like in a starting line. Yes, it was amazing. And then we had sprint, and then you know, in a sprint, who comes fast, but comes. There was also the very famous, uh, you know, the awesome foursome from the Australian, four one. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you know, at that time, I realized how even in my mind it was when the first Olympic Games would come in. You know, only two years in a, in in, a, in a open competition, we came in, we got the medal, relatively easy. I thought we, we should get more, but then for the next uh, four years, I mean, we were training much more. I was much more mature. Uh, you know, the extra four years of training, but then end up fourth. Yeah, so I was thinking. 
this doesn't make sense yes but uh, this is um, reality kicks in in, in in any sport because one one achievement is to climb up and then is to maintain on the top yes and this is not easy because think people think once you win they're going to win all the time but this is not the case especially not especially in sports because you know even rowing regardless how good you were yesterday or two years ago or a month ago you all start from point zero yes <laughs> you all have to row two thousand meters this, there's no benefit of, of, of previous success and uh, if you don't have a good day you don't have a good day yes and if you didn't pre prepare properly if your, your mindset is not proper if you think okay i'm better you're gonna suffer uh, you're gonna pay at it with the result and, and performance so this was a kind of awakening also for me in a way to realize that sport is much more than just chasing the next next uh, trophy yes it's uh, once you you reach the top the main thing is to keep getting better and then become more strategic think of uh, think of different approaches to sport you know maybe add some extra components to to pre preparation you know namely like food mental preparation meditation and all other sorts of uh, components to, to to sport yeah, those are food and meditation and psych psychological things are very interesting topics, but we're not going to go into them today um, because I want to also mention another challenge that I believe a lot of athletes go through, um, at least from what I've heard. So it's after you, you said one challenge is to actually maintain being the best, but then how do you transition from such a, big and such a huge and like full of success career how do you transition from that to something else in life you know because some somewhere it has to end right and I, I i imagine it's it's tough because all of a sudden then you know your days are not just practicing and practicing anymore but it's something else Yes, it is actually a shock. Yeah. And many sportsmen choose to stay in a sport as a coach or mm -hmm. as some kind of a, you know, support employee or worker for the sport. And then they, uh, okay, they, they stop throwing, they stop this performance, but they, they, they're still connected with, with this sport uh, and results and then this excitement, uh, which also gives you a boost and inspiration. You know, even if you don't row yourself, your coach and your team wins, again, you feel good, you know, you feel. So it's not much different being a coach than being in, uh, a sportsman, yes? Mm -hmm. Although you, 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 you don't do it physically, yes? But still, it's a mental preparation and expectation and so on. But you still get the same, same acceleration, yes? I mean, if you win or if you lose, you're, you're sad and so on. A little bit different, but still, it's, it's kind of a same, uh, same, I'll say, same container there, yes, of sport. Whereas if you transition to something else in, 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 in business, um, for me, it was also again chasing goals, yes, and chasing making something big. Yes, uh, my father had an engineering company, a mechanical engineering company. For me, it was also a challenge uh, how to grow this company, how to make it bigger, how to make it. And then even within the company, that the projects we were doing, I was thinking how to make the because we were designing the machinery for the heavy industries, uh, for steel melting furnaces and so on, and steel rolling mills. So I was oh how big furnace we can construct, how big <laughs> rolling milk can we construct. Uh, but then I realized that it's so much different uh, when you are in a business because you don't deal with people that uh, have the same ambitions as you do. Because in sport, mostly everybody is motivated <laughs> because you don't, need to, you don't need to go after them and say, oh, did you practice yesterday? You know, if you have a practice at home alone, mm -hmm. you don't worry that nobody's going to practice yes? because they're motivated to, 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 to be good. So they, they, they fight. They fight and then they uh, hurt. Whereas if you go into the business, from a business perspective, most people are not there for competition. They come in there to work and get the monthly pay. And then many of them actually, unfortunately, they come to work with the mindset that do as less, as minimum as possible <laughs> to get the salary you know so right. this is the completely reversed uh, psychology mentality yes it depends on how how you run your business how you you're able to to motivate uh, people within it but still uh, 
it's much different than sport, yes, much different, even if it's a competition. I know there's some young teams when they actually we have multi, we have um, a company, young company with maybe three, four, five guys, young, all, all very excited, all very ambitious. They may become, they may create this kind of an environment when there it's a lot, lots of competition and then uh, people strive to become good and that this companies may, in many cases succeed. I didn't manage to do this, yes, to be honest. Uh, but uh, we grow, and I also spread to different, different uh, businesses, uh, gathering experience. But w it, for me, it wasn't so excited uh, as as uh, as sport, yes. But then I, I, I find my excitement in, in learning new new skills. Yes, this this become really uh, because when I realize that you cannot force others to to perform as you wish or, or be a, 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 a team. Then I said you have to focus on yourself and improve yourself, yeah, because it's so many things in life that you have you need improving, yes. And then you may think, okay, I, I, I'm a world champion or Olympic champion, and yet you cannot handle uh, paying handle the conversation with your wife. Yeah. Oh yeah, pay the bills, or, or or you're not able to to get your your point across with your wife or with your boss or with your you know parents and so on. Mm -hmm. So those are challenges which look very simple but they're not simple yes and they we all face them daily yes and then when you have your own family when your children still it's it's a challenge yeah being a good father is a, is a massive challenge yes or being a good mother same it's uh, and you, you never know you never know if you've done a good job yes and never know if you could have done better i mean you could always do some, something better about it but uh, when you when you see results you're ready, it's mostly too late yes <laughs> but mm -hmm. when i grow up you can only say, okay, I've done a good job, or maybe done a half a good job, or maybe I messed up, yes. So it's uh, it's also a challenge, yes, even though it's not so directly, uh, you cannot be judged so directly, yes, with numbers, huh? like it is in sports, in most cases. Because mm -hmm. in rowing, you know, if you row in a pair, 6.30, you know, okay, I'm 6.30, if you do 6.20, okay, I have a medal, yes. Huh? Yeah, but in an argument... Uh, you can't know. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. You never know the outcome. Win a, you can you can win, win your argument with your wife, and she she feels bad afterwards. Yes, and yeah. <laughs> she said, and then who, who won? Yeah, who won? Yes, maybe you were you 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 outsmarted her, but then you you make her you cause her pain. Or same thing with children. Yes, you made them do something, but then they they may mm -hmm. you may you may cause them to have some kind of a long term you know trauma or something. Yes. So, you know, it's hard, hard to judge what is good and what is absolutely good. Yeah, it's impossible to judge. It's very re relative. So then eventually, after you, you finish your career, as you mentioned in the beginning, you come back to the sport. You said you, you wanted to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. So you become the president of the Rowing Federation here. Mm -hmm. um, and was this also a similar experience to what it feels like to be a coach, you know, also going through the preparation and like going through sort of the mentality of athletes and, or was it more logistics based and managing, organizing? How was, how was, how was the presidency? No, for me personally, it was uh, a total bureaucracy. Yes. Even though we're, the Federation is small, but it's nothing, nothing like being a coach yeah, because uh, you, nearly every decision you have to fight with. Um, okay, it's easy, to, it's easy to argument with coaches, yes, but then you have people within the federation or clubs which maybe never, never ever wrote or they're just bureaucrats, yes? <laughs> yeah. And they, they don't have these same ambitions. They don't, uh, they, they're kind of a self-serving, self-serving, purpose there uh, to be in a, some kind of a board member of the club and then they think okay maybe we try to get more money or for, for no for no real you know they don't fight in many cases not not everybody but you come across we come across challenges which in my mind was mind-boggling yes because for me it was, it was very simple yes we make we get this amount of money it's a pie and we we choose who where to invest them to get as much as much uh, return on investment as possible, yes. Uh, and you know, sport in a way it's cruel. Right? It's, it's this is not it's not social program, yes. 
you, sh you should put your money where, where result is. Of course, you have to be some kind of, you know, for example, you have a, you have a successful sportsman which from, from, from whom you can milk money, but you, you cannot invest all money in back into them because you have to invest a little bit in the younger generation, which is logical, yes? You know, because in order to, because those guys are maybe 25 years old and they have successes and those successes generate money. But if you just put all the money back into them, then soon later uh, they will stop and there's no money behind. So you have to invest like, like you know, in, 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 in a business, you always have to invest money into research and development the same thing here yes so th this this is normal yes but uh, then to to fight off between different you know narratives different clubs different uh, mindsets which are not mostly performance based yes for me it was always important that whatever we do we do it for maximum performance yes uh, that was in a way kind of uh, for me a bit challenging so to say <laughs> to be a little bit you know much of it was a waste of time also. We had lots, long meetings and then at the end of the day, we didn't agree much. But uh, uh, um, luckily, in this time, we also organized the World Championships in Bled, Bled which were fantastic. Mm -hmm. We lost the World Cup. So it was a uh, very, very, very busy four years of uh, being a president and uh, successful also. We got a very good uh, income. We got the result. We got the medal uh, during the game. So, so it was good, yes. So it was a responsibility, but yes, I guess yes, it was also it was also a window for you to to reintroduce yourself again to to your friends, I guess, rowers that you were racing with. Yes, well. yes, yes. Happy. I mean, to be honest, I felt so much at home because even when we went to FISA meetings and so on, pretty much all the rowers, many of them you know, and then you know, yeah. rowers think similar. So there was for there to be to be honest, international international. Uh, um, community of rowing was much more pleasing to me, and then also, you know, since uh, studying America for me is uh, I like to meet different people uh, from different countries, uh, speak English, and so on. So this was a very good experience, and then I felt at home right away. Mm -hmm. And then I had lots of ideas how to even to modify nowadays to to develop the the World Rowing yeah, Federation, which also is a little bit rigid, I believe, yes, based on uh, look if you compare it to the other sports yes because now sports have to have to fight to, to even stay in olympic games yes you see you see how rowing is getting cut off little by little because it used to be rowing the biggest sport in the olympic games and now it's less by less and less and less uh, because yeah, the yeah. problem is we get many many rowers and very few medals yes because if you think, say for example swimming not so many swimmers i mean there's also a number, big number of swimmers but many competitions, yes, many medals. And uh, I believe the roaming should also go in a direction like kayaking, for example, it goes. You have different distances, so you can use the same sportsmen and have more competitions, more medals. And this, this will also make rowing more popular and also make it stronger in terms of uh, this ratio, number of, of sportsmen uh, to the number of uh, medals. Which sure, is also harder in As an athlete now, I see that, you know, Obviously, the times are not as, as as exciting or as you know as many medals and as many achievements as there were in the past. But I think one of the ways to challenge that is to you know adapt. And you said it's you know the World Rank Federation is kind of rigid, but I, I think also, I also think that it's a good idea, you know. And also we we talk to when we when I talk to other rowers that we would introduce new kind of distances and new categories just like in swimming you see michael phelps winning 23 olympic medals yeah this impossible wrong see see red Ray got five olympic medals yeah. and he, he he needed 24 years yes to do it or 20 years yes yeah. phelps got 18 one olympic games yeah so this is and then he can be he, he can be a super champion he is a champion not not, not to take any anything away from him but you know who's to say that for example, Red Rave is any worse, or is a bit a little, who's also a woman who got the six Olympic medals, and nobody talks about her, yes? She's unknown. Uh, and and uh, this is, that's why the rowing, if they've done some, some of these changes, they could become much more mainstream and more popular, yes? But at the same time, we are also achieving some milestones in rowing in terms of results, in terms of, you know, performance. You know, we're, we're seeing some athletes be, in exceptional shape that 
in your times, you know, was never, I guess, was was not seen as much. So we're seeing 2K on the rowing machine, like world records. We're seeing very fast numbers. I believe also 125. Then we're seeing below 130 on 6Ks. And then, you know, we're seeing 630 in a single skull. All those achievements. Um, so how do you look at those new generations? What do you think they're doing differently? How do you think they are able to get to that level, you know, those unprecedented numbers? Yeah, the science of sports, you know, developed. I mean, when I was rowing that more than 20 years ago, yes, and then normally everything progresses with technology, with new knowledge, with new experience. And so it is rowing, yes. The good thing about rowing, I believe, is it's, it's good that they kept the focus on, on, on people, yes. Not to have some super, you know, space boats, yes, to have whatever, wings or whatever. Just, uh, okay, the minor changes, yes, but we still, we, you know, regardless how good the, nowadays, whatever boat you buy, you still have to be good, yes. The boat's not gonna give you the victory, yes. Just like if you go in, you know, if you think of even cross-country skiing, yes. If you don't have your, um, <laughs> if your skis aren't good, <laughs> you can be the best and then they're not running nicely, yes. Well, perhaps perhaps so, horse, horse riding as well. You know, you need, if yeah, you of course. Have, I mean, depend, de, depend if you don't on have a horse. good horse, you yes, <laughs> yeah. But uh, so yeah. yeah, so rowing is a very pure sport. Also, it's not so so um, tainted with with drugs, you, uh, drug abuse. Yes, which I, it's hard to say for any other sports. Although it's also not super. It's not also completely pure. Yes, but still, it's still uh, relatively innocent. Uh, and, and and also the, the good thing is that it's, it's kind of academic sports. So lots of the uh, students from the colleges, they do sports. It's more, it, it's not so professional. So people learn, uh, earn big money out of it. So it be, becomes more, it's more pristine. Yes. At the same time, it's, it's, a, it's a very clean sport for your mindset also. So I believe uh, this is good. Yes. And then if you make it, they make it a little bit more popular. Through some, you know, extra, little extra changes, uh, would be good. But that, but that's, to go back to to your point earlier, how they improved. Okay, so once one is science because you know, the science of food, the science of you know, of uh, uh, pre mental preparation, the science of of biodynamics. Yes, of, of uh, uh, then science of preparation, the the, the, the power. The, the the strength yes the strength yeah. of of individual strength uh, the, the maximum strength or explosive strength this all improved uh, massively yes and then uh, then and of course these training models also improved and then I also see when I when I look the the new age top level um, rowers I see they practice much more than we did yes I mean okay even at that time yes like you know even the best guys I mean I, the, the used to be in Romania, they were practicing three times a day, was the story, yes. And also, you know, and the, the British, they also train much more in terms of quantity. They used to also, than we did. Uh, but nowadays, I see they, I think they even increased this. And they, they went to the other sports, like, you know, cycling, when they, when they uh, do trainings of five hours, six hours, this used to never be the case for Robin. And this really added onto, onto the, uh, this overall fitness of the, the rowers. Uh, and then when when this fitness increased, then you also see the, such, such good results, especially for longer uh, longer tracks. Yes, and the, the the score itself, the thousand meters, I believe, an ergometer didn't didn't really progress too much. Yes, I remember even in our times, there were guys pulling five forty five or something. Yes. Um, but uh, this like six six k scores, this is pro progress. But this is mainly progress because this uh, level of uh, aerobic performance is increased dramatically, and also the, the, which means that if you have uh, much stronger aerobic performance, you can also uh, move your threshold uh, of aerobic threshold threshold much higher than, than you used to if if you have a shorter shorter practices. And then right. that's why uh, you see this this uh, massive jumps in. Uh, it's not actually so massive, but it's it's a steady progress. Yes, of uh, yeah. it's significant. 
Yeah, we covered a lot. We talked about your career, you know, in a great detail. And uh, I'd like to acknowledge all of the listeners for sticking around. You know, um, definitely interesting topics we covered today. Um, but I also want to, for the, for those rowers that are listening, for those future generations of rowers, do you have any specific advice, you know, for for young athletes that are just getting into the sport or that are already in? What do you think? Sure, sure. I, I always like to have advices for, especially for young, young be the rower, or if you, even if you go to college, yes, and you haven't rowed before, go to go to the crew, start rowing, and then you will see it's an amazing sport. Yeah, this sport teaches teaches you a lot for the life, yeah? and then really, you know, nowadays with all this media bombardment, we think okay, the the success always comes with some kind of a luck or some kind of a you know Ponzi scheme. But in life is not like this. Yes, in life mostly, what you you have to do something something specific you have to create something to to have something yes not everybody can be a financial consultant yes? because finances in most cases it, it's virtual yes if somebody does not produce potato who's going to eat potato yes no financial institution can can uh, bring you food on your table yes they can uh, make you believe that you earn some money of course this is part of a part of the of the economy is based on a, on a non non-productive and non-manufacturing but still uh, you also look look through this eyes in your personal life yes uh, if you don't invest into something it's hard hard to hard to then expect uh, good results yes and always being a good uh, good sportsman is also a very good 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 starting point in life to be a good person yes uh, and then it's drawing is also for me it's very symbolic yeah even compared to other sports. In rowing, the best way is straight ahead, yes? <laughs> There's no shortcuts, yeah? The, the shortcut is, 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 is the, the, the real shortcut is the, the only way to, to win the race, yes? Uh, it's not, nothing there, you, you don't, even though you see your, your competitors next to you, but then you have your own track, you cannot, you cannot you know, um, distract them, you cannot stop them. It's only about you, yeah? about your performance. Not so much about the boat. It's you and then your team teammates. And then, but especially if you're rowing, sweep rowing, one oar. You know, if you don't pull as uh, as hard as the other one, yeah, you're losing speed. Yes, and then the, the bo boat will start to to go off the track. And same thing in life. Yes, you have to always have to be responsible for 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 what you are, yeah? for what you do. Don't 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 try to take the blame of any any others. Uh, don't try to take. Don't 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 think that somebody else is going to do something for you. Yes, as much as you can do, this is much as you can have, and this is a very good uh, life lecture. So yes, and then for young for the young rowers, the the, the guys that are or the girls that are already doing rowing, it's good that you stay in it and, and enjoy competition. And uh, I remember when I come to the states for the first time. For me, it was always okay. Erging was was a torture, yes. <laughs> yes. You so walk there, it's a torture. Uh, but then, uh, when I come there, then we had a six k test, and everybody, everybody after the test was like, "Oh, there was so much fun." I was thinking, "What are you talking about? What do you mean fun? <laughs> <laughs> That's torture." But then, and then I, I realized, I mean, why would you practice so much, not to to show to yourself what you can do? Yeah. So it is fun, yes. Even though it feels pain, but after after the pain is gone, you feel good, yes. And then you see how much you can achieve. Same thing in a gym. If you go to do the weights, and if you if you after the, after the gym session, you feel tired, you feel good, yeah, because you've done something. But if you just mm -hmm. walk around, talk to this guy and the other guy, and do a little bit, you know, a little push-ups, little something, not to 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 break a sweat, you don't feel good about it, yeah. So it that doesn't make any sense to do it, yes. So the only way. The only true way to even know yourself in life is to push your limits and, and, and go out of the comfort zone. And rowing is a perfect sport for it, yes? Yeah, you can push outside of your <laughs> limits anytime. And then you don't need to go 2,000 meter maximum. Yeah? You can row 20 strokes per minute, yes? Mm -hmm. For 30 minutes. And you, you, again, you, you're going you're gonna to see how much you can push yourself, yes? And you're not going to be breathing too hard, but still, you're going to feel the pain in your legs and, you know, 
you have to maintain you have to maintain this uh, this urge you have to overcome the urge of the body which says, which says i'm tired i cannot do it anymore i should stop it's enough so it, it's a very good sport uh, and to train also your mental toughness and to be healthy at the end of the day yes and definitely considering the worldwide pandemic and not not just the covid pandemic but also the uprise of you know mental sort of disorders yes if i can say it like this quasi mental disorders yes you know it's i definitely agree you know it never costs you to try something new it is it is going out of your comfort zone um but i personally learned that rowing has taught me you know if you if you are willing to go do something that you're scared to do if you're willing to you know go over those thoughts that you have that you can't do it it's really re rewarding and even of even even when you're feeling tired you know when it's hard and you still do it it's really rewarding and really helps you with your as i mentioned before it gives you that mental clarity and um personally i see rowing and sport in general is something that society needs to acknowledge more you know yeah i totally agree i totally agree and yeah. it's, uh, it's good for your spirit good for your body and you know people say i'm depressed i always say if you're depressed sit on new york for 30 minutes push it your heart right. and right. tell me how you feel afterwards yes Mm -hmm. There's no depression they can hold for 30 minutes, yes? They, they cannot hold, yes? You're going to feel good. I mean, you're going to feel tired, but then you take a shower and you feel good, yes? Mm -hmm. I guarantee you. Because you clear, clear your mind and clear your... And also your body. It's also when you, you do just... A, because nowadays I mostly work uh, helping people, yes? Helping people feel good. They have a whole protocol and then they do... I also do bioenergy, which is kind of a... Uh, Invisible force, yes, but people think, ah, this, this does not help, yes, and this is nothing, but still. But I see also, you know, without physical activity, there's no change in a body, yes? And everything, our life means, in a way, circulation. So everything that wants to live has to move, yes? He has to circulate. Yeah? Even if you think, even the highway, which is not alive, so to say, yes? No cars in the highway, the highway... In, in, in two years, it's going to be overgrown with, with the plants, yes? So it needs circulation. Same thing with our body. That's why we have blood. The blood needs to be circulated. And then, you know, you eat, you drink, uh, you do exercises, you move, you move your body, and then you feel good, yes? And when everything stops, then it becomes the troubles, yes? You feel bad, your body doesn't feel good, you don't feel alive, and so on. And then, then it comes, then you go down the negative spiral, yes? not feeling so good you, you do even less and you do even less you feel even worse and then soon later you see how oh, this hurts and you start eating medications with the hope that they're going to help then no medication is going to help you if you don't do something for your body if you don't go out if you don't breathe properly if you don't move a little bit yes and uh rowing is one of the sports which i believe is the nearly one of the most efficient sports in terms of time to period yes if you go to row for 10 minutes you're gonna use more more energy than if you go for a run for 10 minutes yes of course it depends on the speed but then you use much more muscles in rowing uh so it's much more complete sport uh but yes even you're not limited to rowing yes you do whatever you have to do physical exercise but rowing is a very nice sport yes especially or even though for most of the active sportsmen and uh, professional athletes work seems like a torture machine but it's not it's uh, i mean it's a <laughs> it's a performance enhancer yes that, that's a real real uh steroid a real drug yes this is a real drug for you yes this is the performance enhancer you sit on it and you you, you have exact data what the, how how fast you're going you know the rate and every, all the all information you need that that uh, they can uh, propel it to the next level you just have to push it through yeah erg is your friend <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely although it's much nicer to row in a boat yes but you know not every day it's a day you can go out especially if you live in a city or someplace have you heard in the basement or in a balcony great so yeah we we started to transition into more health health waters and nature 
definitely something I'm also interested in, you know, bioenergy, as you mentioned, and you've been also doing it for a long, long time now already. Um, but obviously we're going to be um, looking at the time a little bit today. You know, it's, it's something new for, for this podcast, you know, I'm, I've usually been doing episodes of an hour, 20, something like that. So we don't want to go too long, but um, um, so to conclude the episode, um, Dennis, you can, t- you can tell the audience, you know, where can they sort of, how can they get to contact with you if they're interested? Um, or, you know, when can they, I, I guess if, if they're interested in, you know, the videos of races we talked about, definitely those are on YouTube, but then for, you know, I guess to, to follow you or on your personal life, um, you, you might, you might share with the audience some of some information. Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm not very active on the social media, to be honest. I look a little bit. I have a website. It's called revive-temple.com. Um, this is where I, where I, where you can see what I do and what can be good to you. Also, if you, pretty much, if you're living, you, you can use uh, at least one one or few methods I use to to help others. So otherwise, you can find me yeah, maybe on Facebook, Instagram, but I'm not. Uh, too much into it, yes. For me, it's more real life, yes. How much you 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 live your life, yeah. And this is what matters, and not, not how much you present it on on, a, on a virtual platforms. <laughs> also, but it's needed. It, not, not to say that it's it's not necessary. Just to give an example, I thought of Revive Temple. We've been going to cold waters a lot. Cold water exposure. Yes. This is really also eye opening and something that everyone has to try. So maybe in future episodes, we might also talk about that and how it's to experience that. But for today, yeah, it was great. Um, It was great to talk to you. Um, Obviously, something special, you know, talking to you in a new setting. Um, So, yeah, it was a great episode. And for all those listeners, I hope you had fun if you... You, you might leave review what you think about the show. Definitely let us know. And if you have questions for us, then we, we, we definitely can answer those. So yeah, any last words before we end it, Dennis? Not too much, but I'll just say, um, don't stop yourself to feeling good, yes? <laughs> think of it every morning. Just don't stop yourself feeling good yeah and when you feel good just double that feeling (laughs) great great okay thanks okay you're welcome see you bye bye bye